I am Darlene J. McClinton. I am a local artist in Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, I'm originally from South Bronx, New York, and I was raised here in Greensboro. Um, my first beginning to my art journey, I started off as a tap dancer. Um, I love dance. That's one of my favorite um, art movements. Then when I was in the third grade, I began playing instrumental. So I played the violin for nine years. And um, after that, um, when some of my friends, we had a choice, you could either take art classes or you could do home economics. I love home economics because everybody would go to the cooking classes and bring food to the classroom and eat it. Well, instead of doing home economic classes, I did, um, I took art classes. So I did art in middle school. Um, I studied art in high school. I went to Grimsley High School. They had an IB um, art program there. So I, I did it all four years of high school, but I never knew that you can go to school for art. I never knew that you could make money from being an artist. So um, my, I went to a and I wanted to go to a and but I wanted to do, um, be in the visual arts program. And when I first got there, they were like, uh, no, I want to be an architectural designer. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to design houses. I also took architectural classes at Grimsley High School as well. And when I got to a t they said, we don't do architectural design and we only have courses on architectural engineering. I knew I wasn't that good in math. So I was like, this is not going to work for me. They was like, well, you could have an art program at um, USCG. I was like, well, I really want to be at a t um, So finally, the advisor stopped me in the middle of signing up for classes. They said, well, we do have a visual arts program here. I said, what? You could go to college for art. It was like, yes, you could go to college for art. So I stopped everything, walked over to the art department, met Dr. Willie Hooker, the late Leander Kennedy. And from that point on, I have been doing art. I have been creating art. Um, and um, I just love it. I, my first painting that I created, I sold for $500. And when I realized I could actually make a living from art, I knew this is what I wanted to do. So um, that's kind of like my background on how I kind of got into the arts. I'm a very artsy person, everything, my heart, if y'all can see my heart, it would just say art. <laughs> what has really influenced me to be the person that I am today and as an artist is um, just my pastor growing up, my mother, my family, friends, mentors. Um, but I'm inspired by everything around me. Honestly, I could be driving down the street and look up at the clouds and see a animal or a figure in the clouds. I could read a book and something about that word just triggers my imagination and it starts to explore. Um, I'm inspired by nature. I'm inspired by experiencing things. I always tell people that, you know, one of the things that artists have to do is be able to experience life. How can we tell a story and create, we're narratives and we're storytellers, but we're just visual storytellers. How can we visually, you know, tell a story if we've never been through anything? So, you know, artists are very free spirited people. So I would just say that I'm inspired by um, Andy Warhol. Um, one of the reasons why I'm inspired by him is he's like the Michael Jackson of the art world. To me, he's one of the best artists that ever done it. And he was an artist that loved art, but he understood the business of art. And I never want to be an artist where I'm just creating art just to create it and not make a living from it. So I've always studied um, different artists that were able to break through and actually make a living from art. And that was all, always been my attention. Now, when I was in graduate school at Howard University, um, they frowned upon it a little bit because they were like, oh, it should be like artists for art's sake. And I'm just like, no, like, I want to make money from doing this. Um, another artist that I'm influenced by is Kehinde Wally. He's very young. I want to say Kehinde Wally right now is maybe 40. He makes between $50,000 to $100,000 just painting, creating a work of art. He's in every museum all over the world and he graduated from Yale and I studied him at um, graduate school. So I'm inspired by him, just for him to be so young. And he's just showing us that you can really make a, a substantial amount of money from what you love. And I do always tell people too, like it's not 
always what art is not always about the money. You do what you love and the money will come. But it is good when you can make a living from what you actually love because it's not like you're working. So those are a few of my art influencers. And of course, you know, I'm influenced by Oprah. <laughs> um, just because she's self-made, um, a hip hop artist I'm influenced by is Jay-Z. Again, he was self-made. He dropped out of school in middle school, but he continued to read and write. And that's what people, and then he ended up being the CEO and president of a billion dollar company, which is Def Jam, um, with no education, no background. So it just shows you that education is the key, but you don't necessarily have to go to school to be successful. You know, so, but you do have to educate yourself. So those are some of the people that really um, influences me. Something I didn't mention earlier, we may get into it a little bit later, but um, I consider myself a public artist and I chose to go into that avenue because you can go into any avenue. You could be a gallery artist, public artist, street artist, whatever, but I want to leave an impact. I don't, I don't want to be an artist to have all my artworks in the house and nobody knows who I am. And I ask myself, how as an artist can you make an impact and be remembered? And even if you die tomorrow, how would you be remembered? And you remember through public art because public art will be here. I, I may be gone, but the works that I've been creating in the city will be here. But I love Greensboro. I love creative Greensboro. Um, like I said, I was raised here. Um, I've always had a positive relationship with people from high school, from college to graduate school, now in the professional arena. Um, Greensboro to me is changing a lot and it's becoming the city of the arts. And I think Greensboro is finally starting to listen to the community and the residents and the people that live here in order to make this a better city. And at first it was very small. That's why I moved away. It was very small, it's still small. But the fact that we have the Greenway, the fact that we have Creative Greensboro right now, it just shows me as a young professional that Greensboro is trying to emerge in the right direction. Um, so what I love about Greensboro is that it is community friendly. Um, you can build and be successful in Greensboro compared to New York City. I lived in New York City. I lived in Atlanta. Though it, it takes a long time because those cities are so big to become what you're trying to become. And Greensboro, because it's smaller, it gives you more of a stable foundation and platform to kind of launch your career. And once you have a good reputation in the city, um, you know, more opportunities come, come your way. So that's one of the things I love about Greensboro. Um, and even though it's various, you know, we kind of talk about the barriers, like you could kind of see how the city's divided. And then we just had that Black Lives Matter movement and all those things that happened. Um, I think Greensboro out of all the cities is one of the most progressive cities. Um, it has a lot of rich history as well. And with the right people in place, I think that it'll be, it'll continue to grow in the right direction. Um, right now, I really, just putting this out in the universe, I really want to be an international mur muralist. I really want to travel the world, painting every wall, every building that I can paint. Um, um, my goal is to become a household name in the state of North Carolina. And I feel like I'm on my way to hitting that goal. And um, I'm, so I'm working on more proposals for public art. And then um, I was offered a solo exhibition at UNCG in the Gateway Building for 2021-2022. Um, so I really want to create an exhibition that really shocks them. Um, I have a lot of great ideas that's been in my mind that I haven't really kind of put, you know, made it manifest. But my goal is to bring something to the Gateway Building um, that they've never seen before. So my goal is just to continue to innovate and I tell my students and I always tell other young people that you're only as good as your last show. So even though I just painted a mural on Spring Garden Street, at the end of the day, that's over. I gotta move on and keep looking forward to the next project because I'm only as good as my last show. The 
creative hats that I wear is first and foremost, what I tell people as I'm an artist, I wake up and I do art every single day. So I am an artist. My second hat that I wear is education. I'm a teacher. Um, I've been teaching at A&T for 10 years. I've taught at Bennett College. I've also um, taught at GTCC. And one of the reasons why I became a teacher is to help people. I really, really, really love helping people. I, I, I Sometimes I feel like I help people too much, but it is my passion. And I feel like it's my purpose to help young people get further in life than I am right now. And I want them to get it there young. Like if they can hit it and be successful in a multimillionaire by 25, that's what I would want for them. Um, so my goal is to always be there for my students. And I love teaching. And the more I teach, the better I become as an artist. Um, my second passion and creative hat that I wear is entrepreneurship. I consider myself an entrepreneur, um, entrepreneur. Um, and that's just, I'm in the business of making money as an artist. And um, I love doing that because opening up the artist block where Creative Minds Meet, which is an arts venue here in Greensboro, it's been open for six years. I was able to employ a lot of students, UNCG students, a and GTCC, um, provide opportunities and platforms for all different types of artists because I'm working with performing artists, dancers, comedians, um, we're working with visual artists, we're working with um, poets, spoken word artists, rappers, like everything that you could think of in the arts, body painters, we were doing and we were paying artists and we paid artists first before we paid ourselves. And even though some people would say, like a millionaire probably would say, no, that's the wrong type of model. You know, you need to eat first before anybody else eat. Eats. But um, for me, it was important to make sure that the community and the artists, we built the artist block in my for the community and we built the artist block to pay artists. It's hard. If you're a doctor, you can go out and get a job. Um, but artists, we can't just go out and make a six figure salary. So it was important for us to only hire artists, even if it was a bartender, they were artists. They were 3D artists. They were a actress or actor. And I love that about um, the artist block. So that's another hat that I wear and I sell my work as well. My other creative hat I just picked up is the grants manager at Arts Greensboro. And I never foresaw that coming in my life. And that's how life happens sometimes. And when Laura Way reached out to me and asked me to be a part of the team, you know, I knew I had so many other things going on. But once I realized that I would be in the position to do exactly what I love, which is to feed artists, to pay artists, to put money in artists' pocket. I was like, this is kind of in an alignment of what you're already doing. So um, I took the position and it's been great because I've been able to help artists be able to fund their dreams. And that's how I look at it. Sitting as a grants manager, my job is to help artists fund their dreams and get the word out to as many artists as possible. Um, so those are pretty much all the hats that I wear, I believe. Um, the pandemic uh, has affected me tremendously. I'm not gonna lie. When it first hit in March and when everything was happening, I'm not gonna lie, I went to a straight depression. I'm gonna tell you why. One thing about me is I enjoy making money. I like making money. I'm not gonna lie about that. <laughs> Love making money. Something, oh my God, I'm about to lose my jobs. I'm gonna lose everything that I've been working hard for. I'm not gonna get any more commissions. I'm losing public art projects. That's when I first, you know, that was my first thought process through it. Then when we had to close down the artist block, that made me sad. It wasn't the fact that we were losing money by closing the artist block, is that the artist block is a hub for artists. So we're like a family. So I miss the energy of meeting those people and seeing those people and, and talking to those people and um, just, being in that atmosphere. Um, so for, I would say a good four or five months, it was very hard for me to transition. I was staying up to three or four o'clock in the morning, researching, reading about everything, just freaking myself out, you know, couldn't sleep. And then it was like, but the positive part I started begin to notice is the rest. 
Like we work, we work, we work, we work. I just talked about five jobs that I have. When do you have time to rest and restore? So I was like, this is a good time to rest. So I just started resting. I mean, I, I literally rest. And now I'm not going to, I'm going to be very transparent since I've been transparent the whole time. I'm a little lazy. <laughs> like uh, people are like, when are you going to open up the artist block? I don't know. Like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sick of being out there to two o'clock in the morning. Now I go to bed at six o'clock. I kind of like going to bed now. So I'm going to have to hire somebody to do what I've done because it's over. I ain't going back to that type of lifestyle. So it changes your lifestyle. Um, in a little bit, but I was able to keep painting um, through it. So that was also a blessing as well. And one other blessing for me that came, that's coming out of the pandemic is when I moved to Greensboro, I was, a, everybody knew me as an artist. When I started teaching at a &T, everybody saw me as an art teacher, Professor McClinton, Professor McClinton, Professor McClinton. Then when I opened up the artist block, oh, nobody sees me as an artist. Oh, she's the owner of the artist block. She's the owner of the artist block. You know, so that went away. Then, you know, grants management came into place. But with everything being shut down, I was able to reemerge. And like my brand was able to expand as an artist. And people started saying, oh, yeah, she is an artist. She's just not an educator. Oh, yeah, she's just not a business owner. She legitly is an artist. I'm like, yes. That's what I've been trying to tell you. I am an artist. <laughs> so um, that is, I would say, the positive part that came out of um, the pandemic, just being able to reemerge and focus on myself um, with the artist block and everything that I do with education or uh, Arts Greensboro. Everything is community-based. All I have done for the last 10 years is focus on the community. I raised over $20,000 for a t with uh, scholarships, for students, I've done other fundraisers. I've served on several committees and boards and stuff like that. All I've done for 10 years is help the community and I forgot about me. And once I started focusing back on me, I felt like my career started elevating in the way that I really have been designed for it to elevate. The biggest challenge for me about making art is keeping myself relevant. Um, as an artist, we have to keep ourselves relevant in order to continue to make money in this in, in, in the public art world. Uh, so I would say that's the biggest challenge. Also, because I wear so many creative hats, um, carving out time to not just work based off commissions and what I'm getting paid to do, but just to create a body of work just for me and for my spirit and for my soul. So um, because I just finished that project, now on my calendar, I've carved out two hours of time. So from seven to nine, or from seven to 10, I just wanna solely work on digital artworks, getting ready for the solo show. Um, just having time management is a, is a challenge for me as an artist. Um, I have multiple purposes. My first purpose for making art is therapy. Um, it's a therapeutic experience for me. A lot of people don't know I'm adopted. My mother died when I was seven, about to turn eight. Um, I lived in almost every project that in low income housing that you could think of. My father was incarcerated. I was raised by uh, my mother's best friend who adopted me, but it wasn't my biological family. So with all of that happening and being in foster care, group homes, children develop and myself, I develop anger. So um, instead of taking my anger and being, you know, cutting up in school, which I probably still did, was a little bit bad in school, but cutting up in school and just taking it and making it negative, I chose to take that anger and put it towards positive things. So creating art was a way of me healing myself from my childhood trauma. So that's what really made me get into art. And I'm in therapy right now. My therapist um, was saying that to me, like when you were in those, you know, those bad environments, one of the reasons why you like public art is because you're beautifying the city, but maybe you like beautifying the city because you're thinking about the trauma that you went through when you were a child. So that's the first and foremost why I really create art. It's really for me, it's therapeutic for me. And then number two, I create art because um, it's my way of giving back. 
to the universe and giving back. I believe art is a gift and it's my gift and it's my way of giving back to the universe, giving back to the community, especially when I'm doing public art. I'm really thinking about the community in mind and how our, how will the community respond to the works that I'm creating. And then number two, a lot of artists don't admit this, but one thing, one biggest reason why people are artists is we look for these words right here. Oh my God, that is so beautiful. We look for that, like we need that, like artists do need that type of validation. We do, and I, that's all I look for is people to say, it's beautiful, I'm like, yes. You know, then sometimes you get like, well, that design quite doesn't work. It's like, oh, so then it makes you want to get a little bit, you know, keep practicing and becoming better. But we, I do do it for people to tell me that the work is good. Um, it was in 2012, um, Michelle Obama was the commencement speaker at a &T. It was packed. Usually none of the professors go to see graduation. I go every semester, haven't missed a beat. And it was uh, really packed. And she asked the students of class of 2012, she said, who are you? I want to challenge you and ask you, who are you? She said, um, a lot of times when people ask you that question, you answer the question, I'm a doctor, I'm a lawyer, I'm an artist, I'm this. She said, that is what you do. But have you ever thought about who are you? So I sat there, I tuned, after that, I just tuned her out, tuned everything out, and I just went deep within myself and I asked myself over and over and over, like, darling, like, that's a good point. Who are you? Who the hell are you? And um, what I came up with by the end of commencement is I am a woman of integrity who lives a life of service. That is who I am. So I just wanted to add that.